I sort of fell in love with the Chintonid when I saw it. And I mean, for me, it was a very formal love affair. I was an artist in residence on a two and a half year mission called Tara Oceans, and they're studying the health of the oceans. They are literally taking the temperature of the ocean through the study of plankton. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent of the biomass in the ocean is actually the invisible stuff, bacteria and small unicellular organisms. I began collecting plankton from all around the world. It was love at first sight when I saw this, these tintinids through the microscope because of their resemblance to a champagne glass for a mermaid. And I also liked it that they were sort of mid-range up in the food web of plankton, so you could see all the phytoplankton inside them that they had been eating. As I collected more and more plankton samples, I found um, tiny shreds of plastic in all of them, no matter how remote the location was. And so oceans and seas that looked completely pristine actually had plastic in them. It may not be the visible plastic pieces that are the most worrisome, but uh, tiny plastic particles like fibers from a shirt that you wash that may be the most worrisome because these particles might get into the tissues of planktonic organisms, fish, and eventually in our tissues. We, do, we really don't know much about this danger. Microplastics are tiny particles of plastic less than one millimetre in size. They're micrometer-sized particles that are smaller than the width of, of a human hair. Microplastics themselves come from a variety of sources, ranging from the breakdown of larger products, like plastic bottles and bags, to more direct sources from the textile of clothing, the small fibers that come off from washing machines. The smaller a particle of plastic gets, the more available it, it becomes to be eaten by a wider range of organisms. One of the main jobs for artists is to reflect um, what's going on in, at that time in history, even a microscopic scale. The health of the oceans and the health of everything on land is completely intertwined. And I think that if I can help illuminate that through artwork, that would be my goal. I've always found glass to be incredibly enchanting sort of like sculpting in lava. It's very visceral, it's very organic. Uranium glass looks extremely bright in natural light, but under a black light, it actually fluoresces. So it looks like bioluminescent phytoplankton. Because this sculpture is about the ocean being in peril, the fact that it's slightly radioactive because of the uranium 
is appropriate. I'm very interested in people relating to the shapes, but also the shapes being scientifically accurate. But in this case, I made the interior shape of the Tintinin looks sort of like a damsel in distress. The sculpture is two tintinid plankton ensnared in plastic that's been in the ocean for a long time. It just reminded me of the opera La Boheme, where Rodolfo falls in love with Mimi, who is actually dying of consumption. I want people to fall in love with Mimi. I want them to love the plankton and hate the plastic. So I'm looking for an emotional reaction, which leads to action. Individuals have an incredible amount of power here because it's the consumers who are actually buying the actual products. A lot of consumers expect that there would be well-grafted scientific knowledge to go into the decisions made to use a particular material. Unfortunately, the companies aren't looking at that. We're not anti-plastics. We actually think plastics can have a lot, an awful lot of good. We're just saying that for any material, the costs and the benefits really need to be weighed. You know, we estimate by 2050, we could be adding an extra 33 billion tons of plastic onto our world. If we have no idea about where most of this plastic is currently, what the problems are, this poses a huge problem for us. Life is a complex in interdependent system that you cannot have complex forms of life like us without having the whole chain of organism from bacteria all the way to animals. A lot of places are changing their plankton composition, probably because of the changing temperature of the ocean. And we don't know how you know, fast species can adapt. The microscopic world affects us as humans and especially things that happen in the sea are kind of out of sight, out of mind. So microscopic things that happen in the sea are out of sight, out of mind. I wanted to make La Boheme larger than life so people could sort of see the drama and see what was happening and how that directly affects their lives.